the quicker we can get the answers, you know, the quicker we can get to the next question. And just remember, it's about transparency and it's about getting information. Accurate, timely intelligence will help us work better with our elected officials and what's going on. So I appreciate it. So come up here. And now I'm going to ask our elected officials to say a couple words while I look over the questions. There are four seats here. Some people who might have to sit. Folks, we have four open seats to the show. Four people. Oh, three. All right. So.
um, the tone that's been set here about having a respectful conversation, um, about all of your sort of willingness to engage in your civic responsibilities and to be here. Um, you know, I will do my best to answer all of your questions. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you I don't know the answer. Um, I will try and just give you the straight honest truth uh, the answers that I do have um, and keep this as simple as possible. Um, what I will tell you is starting in the beginning of August, actually even a little bit earlier than that, um, our city started to face an unprecedented crisis. Uh, we started to receive, and I'm going to leave all the politics out of this because as an emergency manager, um, I sort of have the luxury of just dealing with the emergency, not the politics. Um, I hear you. But, I'm sorry? You can't hear me. So, in early August, we started to receive uh, large numbers of buses coming into the port of the um, and throughout the city. Um, the city has now received over 40,000 dollars And these are people who have made incredibly difficult journeys in the game. They have legal status here as asylum seekers. And we are able to do that.
integration to the parking lot, and that parking lot will be left better than we found it when we displace this operation. Can I add a follow-up? Yes, yeah. we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to you. All right, we're going to stick with the Je Jessica's. Jessica Dunn. Jessica Dunn in the house. Doom. Doom. September 22nd, there was a letter drafted from the United States Congress members to the Department of Homeland Security. And the um, in the letter, they basically outlined that there were some security concerns regarding uh, President Maduro's release of convicted felons within their incarcerated system and were being uh, forced to move with the migration groups. I have the letter here, which I can provide to you. Um, and they have confirmed, according to an intelligence report by the Department of Homeland Security, that the um, there, are, there are some individuals that have uh, been identified as convicted felons from their country of origin and have been moving forward up to our borders and now potentially to our backyard. So with that, my question is basically this, is any agency, is any department taking appropriate measures to properly vet the migrants coming in and are they able, I'm talking about the agencies, able to obtain the criminal database of the country of origin to determine if this individual you know, has a criminal background? Because obviously we don't want them in the U.S. if that's the case. Ricardo, why don't you get, hold on one second because I want to say it for the folks here. So folks, Ricardo's question was as follows. I feel like I'm an interpreter. He wants to know if there have been criminal background checks being done. Uh, there's been a report Venezuela is releasing, releasing their prisoners coming over. And if there is a vetting process in place and if they're checking databases and do they have access to the countries of origin criminal databases so they could properly check the background. That was the question, Commissioner. Yeah, um, so I don't work for DHS, I don't work for the federal government, I work for the city of New York. Um, 
DHS when asylum seekers cross the Can border. I say something, please? No, 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 sir. I, I should. No, if he doesn't sir. know anything, let, let, just, just sit down. Sir, let, let me I tell you in the beginning. Let the man answer, He'll please. Be asked to leave. Right, right. Let the man answer. Thank you. So, DHS does background checks on individuals who are seeking asylum. The amount of information they have is dependent largely on our relationship with the country that they are coming from. Um, and so with certain groups, you have more information than other groups that are coming in. What I can say is for the mayor, for the city, the security of the people who are coming into our care is of paramount importance, as is the people in the communities that they are going to. And so we will do everything we can to ensure your security, as well as the people who we are caring for who are coming to New York <coughs> seeking asylum. All right, so if I could just expand upon that, if I'm yep. hearing that right, and obviously I'm not holding you accountable, but what I'm hearing is you do not have access to the databases, country of origin. Someone can come in, these folks are not necessarily, they, they're seeking asylum, but we don't necessarily know where they're from. They don't necessarily have uh, birth certificates or passports. So are we taking them at their word? Or is it like oh, yeah. so, so the people that are coming to us have paperwork from the Department of Homeland Security. But where is that? Paperwork from the Department of Homeland from, Security. From when, they, when they cross the border, right? DHS is processing 67,000 people a day crossing oh, the border seeking asylum. All right, so just so everybody understands that it's, it's an understanding process. Someone comes across the border, they have, let's say, they have no papers. Right? I, I would have to refer you to DHS. I don't know exactly what the process is. Somebody doesn't have papers. So how do we but find out? What I can out? tell you is the people that are that are coming to us have paperwork that has been given to them from DHS with a notice to appear, with uh, information that, that they have provided at that, at that border. But process. you understand we're looking for proper criminal background checks. You know, to Ricardo's point, right. they're letting out prisoners, etc. If I may, yes. If I may, so I'm just going to read a, a, a paragraph, the third paragraph in the memorandum. Speak. Uh, I'm going to read the third paragraph in this congressional memorandum that was submitted to the Department of Homeland Security, requesting information. Um, and several senators signed this. So, according to the United States Customs and Border Protection, between October 21st and July 2022. More than 130,000 Venezuelan nationals were entered, were encountered after entering the United States illegally. This is their words, this is not mine. As a result of, uh, you know, they go into politics, divided to whatever, uh, you know, the administration's disastrous border policies. Uh, it is unknown how many violent Venezuelan prisoners have been released into the interior of the U.S. As identifying Venezuelans with criminal records is nearly impossible unless the individual admits their records to the U.S. authorities, this will undoubtedly put our country in grave danger. And they directed some pointed questions, and, and, you know, to the Department of Homeland Security regarding, you know, the number of individuals that are coming in, how many have been identified, are they self-declaring, and they basically have no way of determining this to the commissioner's point unless they either self-declare or we establish a better relationship you know, with the country of origin and have access to those databases and those records. So, so I guess what we're trying to say, Commissioner, we're welcoming, we want to keep the folks at Orchard Beach safe, you know, from home, as well as the people in this community. We want, we are- We're 100% aligned. You know, we're, yeah. we're, and I think that's fair to ask that question. We're 100% aligned. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next up, the wife of Billy McGee, Annie McGee. Yay! Two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So what I can tell you is this is an unprecedented event. This has not happened before. New York City always welcomes every year tens of thousands of immigrants. It's, it's what we do here. I mean, it's what we've always done. Um, well, we have, in New York State, right now, we have 110,000 asylum seekers in New York. There's about 75,000 asylum seekers in Texas. I think New York State is already doing all of our work here, and yet we're now being expected to do the job for other people as well. And we are adjusting, we are doing what we do as New Yorkers, and I think we're doing, the city is doing a great job of it. Why weren't we prepared I, for this if we knew there was four million people? I don't know that we knew country. that there was gonna be people getting bused to New York. Okay. Okay. If, if, if I could just say one please everybody. <laughs> At the beginning of the beginning of this, we ask, please be respectful. The commissioner is answering the questions. Some of these questions are even they're not within you know his his scope of work. He's doing his very best to answer the questions. All right, next next up, longtime City Island family, Elise Schaller, are you here? Elise Schaller. I appreciate the softballs. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of these questions are way above my pay grade. Um, Do you have an opportunity to ask these questions when you meet with the people that So what I will say is, um, first off, it is, uh, there are conversations taking place way above my pay grade about where, who's going to be. How do you get those people here? So, I mean, the yeah. close contact with them about paying, there's a number of programs that pay for the programs. Uh, the president, members of Congress, the Senate. So is, is, a, is AOC our representative? I'm happy to answer these questions, but I have to give them a chance to answer these questions. Where's the mayor? Answer it. So, there are federal programs that fund the work that we are doing. We are working with our federal partners, FEMA, the White House, we're working with our state partners, DISHES uh, and others, about funding for this. 
We're still identifying what our requirements are, but these programs do have federal funding set aside to pay for them. So, so it's not, excuse me, it is not city tax dollars that are gonna be on the hook for paying for this. Program. It's still all money. In terms of why we are doing this, and this might be unpopular, but the great strength of New York has always been immigration. Immigrants have always been the strength of the
We have extra security um, at the actual facility. We have the National Guard that is going to be working at the facility. And if we need to increase police presence, we will increase police presence. The mayor and the administration is committed to your security. He ran on a campaign of public safety. It's the first thing. <laughs> So there is you, Commissioner. You need to understand there's frustration here. I get it, and I'm, I'm so, here to answer all the questions. So I'm happy to do so. Some of the answers, as you said, you know, you don't have, but we're interpreting them as being a need. So just please understand on all sides. I just wanted to interject for two seconds, uh, and I want to be clear. The last meeting we had at the Civic, I did mention to y'all that since the beginning of the year, when I took office, I had a very serious conversation with NYPD about the shortage that we have of officers. I echoed that sentiment again last week when I found out. So we're working on that precisely with the mayor's office to make sure that we're making our community whole to begin with, right? It's not just adding officers now, it's adding officers now permanently because we needed it beforehand and that's the issue here. We faced worldwide. people from my agency, it includes people from 
other agencies that work for the city, state partners, MTA, the National Guard, NYPD. And as I said, your security is paramount to us and important. And we're gonna do whatever it takes to make sure you are all safe. I can't emphasize that enough. I don't know how I can answer that question better for you all. Guys, 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 guys. All I want to say, folks, let me. And I'm sorry, I just want to say one more thing, too, on that. Yes, sir. You know, I hope that we can appeal to our better angels. I've been working at Support Authority for the last couple of months. I've been seeing these families coming off the buses, the people coming off the buses. The men coming off the buses, who you, some of you are talking about, the first thing they ask for is where can they get a job? Right. right? The families, I, I saw the other day, I saw a mom, this will stay with me the rest of my life, and I've seen some awful things around the world. I've seen some awful things around the world. I saw a mom physically, physically shaking as she held her children and her husband for the first time in weeks in weeks. These are people who are coming to our shores because they're, they're looking for something that all of our families looked for in the past. And I hope that I know that some of you are afraid. I know that you have concerns. I know that you have frustration. Look, we're frustrated. We didn't ask for buses to be sent you to New York City. Yes. 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 Central Park on Fifth Avenue. Let the elites to deal with that. Be respectful, folks, please. Thank you. They were welcome. They are in Central Park. Folks, folks, What if rich people deal with it? 60 locations across the city. We are going to have to. We are looking at Staten Island. Central Park. Central Park. Central Park. Central Park. Let's be civil, all right? The Your voice does not want I'm this. I will close this meeting down right now. Let's be civil, please. Commissioner, I, I think what you're seeing is there are many, we have retired, we have a retired police commissioner, we have lawyers, we have waitresses, we, food service, sorry. We have firemen, you know, we are a working class community. We work for government. So we kind of sort of know how slow the wheels work. So that's what you're getting. We are a loving and caring community. During COVID, working with our councilwoman, the, the, the councilwoman and I, for like 12 hours, we're delivering meals one day, knocking on doors. We didn't care who was undocumented, who was elderly. We cared about those in need. So please, don't insinuate we're not caring. We do care. We care about people.
a curfew. But <laughs> with 100 to 200,000 square feet. We need big spaces. There's not a lot of big spaces that are not used in New York City. Great laws, such a large folks. Commissioner, with, with all due respect, Sorry. Um, um, the, uh, the armories have... So we are saying, looking at sure armories, yes. The Kingsbridge Armory, the Beckham Armory. We are looking at all the other armories. Kingsbridge. We are looking at all the armor. Probably got homeless men already. All right, all right, folks. Let, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it civilized. We're gonna be wrapping up soon. Alicia, you got a quick question? Yeah. As far as the curfew goes, what is the plan in place when someone breaks curfew? Do you go find So again, people, people, these are not people who are detained. The curfew, we're sort of still establishing what that looks like. What I can tell you is, is that people are free to go. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. We can't detain people. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no.
I'm here today to find out what is actually going on. We're going to have a thousand, we're going to have a refugee camp in our backyard. A uh, thousand individuals, adults. And I'm concerned for the safety of my children. And I also want to know when this is going to end when he, when the commissioner himself said that there's 67,000 people that are being processed every day. What is a thousand people coming here? How is that even going to solve that problem? When is it going to end? You know, okay. if, if, if you have an unlimited flow of people coming in, then the question is, you know, is this, gonna, is this ever going to end? What's the end solution to this? 
I mean, we're a community of immigrants. You understand? This is a middle class community, right? So we have compassion, but the other thing is, is that you know, we're concerned about the safety for our, for for our community. They did mention. You heard when they mentioned that uh, a lot of these individuals, a lot of these individuals are hardworking individuals. But all you need is that small group of individuals that could cause a problem and havoc and hurt my children or my wife. And that's something that I need to be concerned about. And all New Yorkers need to be concerned about. So, so, the, so you, your main concerns are safety and the timeline. There's a, this is an open-ended kind of thing, right? Yeah, that's are we gonna have 2,000 in a month? There's, there, there seems to be no answers. You know what, me and my family, we, we, just, we were trying to like talk about this in a historical context. We saw the grapes of wrath. You know what I'm saying? When America was sane in their policies, right? Who did Steinbeck say was the cause of the problem? And you know what? It's, it, it's, it, they were basically saying, why are you inviting all these people here if you don't have the resources to take care of them? That's, that's really what I don't understand. It's like, you know what? It, like, what, what, what's the end game? If you have four million people coming, you know what? How many people can a community, or even how many can a community take in and actually give a quality of life to, without also not affecting our quality of life to the point where we no longer feel safe in our community? Is that too much to ask? We're, so, um, the commissioner was talking, was responding to questions about safety. People seemed not very satisfied with his answers. What, what, do you have an idea of what kinds of answers people were looking uh, for? Well, is there going to be any kind? Okay, so from what I understand, from what I learned today, that they're going to come here, but they could also reinfro freely. Okay, so they're. But who are these people? You know, uh, you know, there was some documentation or some statements or proof that was written where senators had mentioned that we don't know who these people are, and some of them are being. Amongst the 99%, who is that 1% that they're letting out of the prisons, much like they did with the Cuban situation? I mean, what, what kinds of measures would you like to see them take that would make you feel that the safety would, measures are in place? I mean, I personally think that the answer has to be taken care of at the border. You can't have a porous, a porous border. You have to have some, some kind of control. I mean, I'm not an expert on immigration, and like I said, we're a community of middle-class immigrants here. We're one generation away from being immigrants ourselves. But you know what? We also had sponsors. We, you know, we came over and, and it, it wasn't like it was today where from what we're reading and seeing, it's just an open border. It's just, a, you know, it's... I mean, he was saying 67,000 people a day are coming in on the border. A thousand dollars is a, is a drop in the bucket. Um, you, you're talking about national policy, though. Like, what what would you like to see the administration? I think the answer is national. Yeah. The answer is national. But just in terms it's of been dumped on Eric Adams. It's been dumped on New York City. Right. All right. But the point is that now, now, but the rhetoric it has to be addressed. There has to be a logical solution. You know, I, I I'm here tonight to hear. I mean, I would. Uh, you can't defund the police and also expect a thousand people, many of them who are seeking opportunity and jobs, yes, but what about the people who are also seeking jobs jobs here? Are they going to be taken advantage of? Are they? It's. It, I find it hard to believe that, I find it hard to believe that this is not going to end when there's no answer as to how it, how it, how it can end. If you have four million people come in over the border and they're telling us now, this is just the beginning, I think. And I think every community needs to needs to understand. We want to help people, but I'll say one thing to the public: they were mentioning that a lot of these individuals are coming from Venezuela. Why are we importing the economic policy that destroyed Venezuela and caused the problem amongst the politicians? So I'll say another thing: a lot of what I'm seeing, you know what? It's it's horrific voting by the American public. You know, it's unheard of to me that, and I, and I will get political here, it's unheard of to me that AOC is the congresswoman for this district. Where was she tonight? She basically helped to, to, cause, to, to cause the problem. So you would have liked her at this meeting to respond She's our congresswoman. To, right. To respond to things that are happening also. She is our federal, congresswoman, right? Federal, yes. Yeah. And, and, and I'll say it again, we are, we are a community of middle class immigrants. We're one generation away at most. 
And we need some diversity of housing here in the city also. You know, it's like, now they want to raise the taxes on the ones, ones and twos. We were able, we lived in, you know, we helped make this community and I want my kids to live here also. But there's flight. And it's not just white flight. It's flight of people who want safety for their children. So I voted for, I voted for Eric Adams, right? I, I, I voted, I gave, you know, and you know what? Uh, if there's anyone that's going to save New York City from our crisis, I believe it's him. But the point is, is that, you know what? He was pro-police. He was pro-police, have to admit it. You know what I'm saying? But the point is that you've got to, you, you know, this has to be addressed. You can't just have thousands of people come through a middle-class community of one and two family homeowners. Or at, at, at least have to have a plan when you have 67 or 4 million over an, you know, some astronomical number. This is not unprecedented. I am of Greek heritage. Look at what happened to Greece. You know, massive immigration. This is a worldwide, this is a worldwide pro problem. And we have to have big solutions to it. But right now it just seems as if we're being asked. We're being asked to put in a precarious situation and we need to be aware of it. That's why I'm here. So, so Bozo never put on a referendum for us to vote. So we want to be in such We need to get a judge to say, the city has overstepped its authority. We got a temporary restraining order. And we'll call him for the question. And I do want to get back to this point is that, you know, like, look at what happened in Martha's Vineyard. 50 individuals showed up and they had the National Guard come and take it away. And these are the people who make the policies. So, we're average people. We wake up, we go to work in the morning. We have nothing to do with these policies besides the who we, of who we vote for. So, it's a hypocrisy. 50 people on an island, and now we're asked to take a thousand on a continuous basis. Fine, we want to help people, but it's, hip, it's hip, hypocritical. I did help her out. Yeah. I have two cameras. Okay, great. This is you, uh, John Green. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. Um, so tell tell people um, a little bit about yourself and why you came out tonight. My name is John Green, and I'm running for the assembly in the 82nd Assembly District here in the Bronx. 35, 40 years in government service. Following the military, I joined the state government and locally a borough president's office in the Bronx. And finally, New York City Office of Emergency Management. I was director of enforcement at the New York City DOITT. When the tragedy of 9-11 hit, I was on scene. I worked that pile for 10 months. Now, after that, followed through the job, but I retired. But I'm coming back. People say at 70 years old, John, why are you going to run now? I say because I'm as aggravated as everybody else is. The same tabletop issues we talk about over and over again are there. Crime, economic development, mental health, health services, etc. And now, just things that are happening within our community with no plan, haphazardly. We're talking about a tent city on Orchard Beach in the middle of hurricane season. They gotta be out of their minds as well as all the other problems that come with that. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm going to run hard. I'm going to give it my best, and I'm asking everybody to come vote for me November 8th. 
election day. And I, I thank you so much for this time. What did you think about the meeting today? The meeting today? We, the community did not get the answers they're looking for. As I say, when I left the Office of Emergency Management, there was a plan for everything. I worked on the plan for the hurricane. I worked on the plan for the fire. I worked on the plan for the water main drain. I worked on those plans with other individuals alongside me. For them to say there is no plan for this community to look at is hogwash. There's got to be a plan there. There's got to be a plan. What happens when the fences go up? Who's going to secure the site? Does the local police, the 45th precinct, have the manpower? I do not believe it has the manpower. Is there going to be other ancillary services available? The whole immigration issue is a mess from the federal level on down to the local level. And now the local level is feeling the squeeze. It's been felt in other areas, other states throughout the country. The thing is for the people to get up in arms, as we are doing now, and say, yo, enough is enough. Let's use a little common sense. We can handle the problem, but we can handle it together. We cannot have it done by a single individual. What's going to go on now? Is it going to be a tent or two up there on the beach? I don't know. I'm going to head over to the beach now after I leave here. I want to see. Are things happening? Is there a way for the community to get a temporary restraining order? I don't know the legalities, but some of the folks are talking that way. Let's get it done. With the help of people like yourself, we're going to get this done. And I guarantee that no matter what happens, as a community, we'll handle the problems. But only if you work together. Thank you. All right. Is there any, anything else that you want to say about it? No. Okay, thanks for talking you, with me. You need to stay in touch. We have a headquarters over on Main Street Road.